Two things that every small boat needs, a horn and lights. Today we're wiring up a brand new horn, nav lights, and stern light into our 1972 Sea King runabout fiberglass boat. And we're going to put in a junction block to wire everything up to and show you what we've done. This is not going to be a how-to video like some of my videos are. Instead, we've already done most of the work and we're just going to give you a brief walkthrough of what it looks like. And hopefully this will help you with some ideas for wiring up your vintage boat. Okay, so the first thing we did is installed this nice aftermarket horn. Boat did not originally have a horn installed in it, so this is going to be a nice accessory to have. Uh, decent shape, got it off of Amazon. I'll supply the link like I usually do. Wiring harness going through the deck. One of the things that we're going to need to do here is we have it... Um, fairly well grommeted but i'm going to put a little bit of sealant top and bottom of that hole right there just to make sure that we don't get any kind of drippage going through the through the deck plate but that's our horn to operate that horn as again it did not come with one originally we had to install a horn button so right here just a nice aftermarket momentary switch that we installed by drilling through the dash. Uh, when drilling through, we did it incrementally. And then when I got to a slightly larger size, I have a um, an actual step bit, which is, uh, well, I would show it to you if I had it, but basically it's a large bit that has a varying diameter as it goes up the bit so that you can start off with a small hole and get bigger and bigger as you as you drill. And so that's how we got the proper size that we needed to finish out this hole on the front. I'll show you the back in a moment. And then this is the original two position headlight switch that was installed with the boat. So this here, we kept original. Uh, this is still loose because I haven't tightened it up on the back yet, but um, I will do that when I'm done with everything that I'm doing right now. So one pool turns on the nav lights up on the bow and two pulls turns on the nav lights and the stern light, the, the uh, all around light coming off the starboard side of the stern. So that's that, okay? So now, let me show you what we've done underneath. By the way, through the course of this project, I don't mind showing you that we've absolutely destroyed the cockpit. Um, I got so much crap here, but you know, this is what happens when you're, when you're doing a project. We'll get it all cleaned up and she'll look good as new again. But let's show you what's going on under the dash. So underneath the deck with the horn installed, we have our wiring harness from the horn coming through the deck plate. Okay, I'm gonna uh, fasten this up here with some duct tape when I'm done. But that wire is gonna run across the dash and comes over here to the back of our newly installed horn button. So these are the wires that will provide power to the horn itself. Now power to the button is provided via our hot and common wires, which run over here and split off negative and positive to our fused horn uh, block in the junction block. Similarly, our light switch, which is still loose, I haven't I haven't uh, tightened this down yet because I want to be able to twist it while I'm working on it. But it is uh, cleaned up and reinstalled. And let me get this wire out of the way here. And again, we have our power wire going out to the junction block, and our hot wire to the light going up and under the deck plate and up toward the bow. So that's gonna be for our nav lights. And then the, the uh, negative wire coming from the nav lights comes over and connects up, oops, this one, to our junction block, to the negative side of our junction block. 
As for the junction block, that's as simple as you see. We have our main feed wire on the positive end and our return wire on the negative end that feed the block and those will connect directly to the battery in the stern of the boat. So having this set up here makes it nice and neat and easy to connect all of our accessories in one location that's right on the back of the dash. So I don't have to run a lot of wire all the way down the gunnels to the stern of the boat just to connect to the battery or to a junction block near the battery. Instead, we're bringing all the power closer up to a midships behind the dash and I can run everything right off of here. Appropriate size fusing for the accessories that will be plugged in and that's just a little bit of math that you'll do as you as you go and plug in the different accessories that you need uh, connected to your block. So that's our that's our wiring so far. Uh, still to come is we're going to have a uh, USB socket that we can use for charging our phones. We're going to have that connected through the dash, uh, probably somewhere over here on the port side of the of the dash. And we're also going to um, potentially have a radio, but we haven't fully made that decision yet. And he, this uh, block is going to be for the gunnel lights. So we're going to have cabin lights, a nice blue LED color running down both sides of the gunnels tucked up underneath the gunnels so that they'll create a little bit of mood lighting. And that'll be that'll be connected through here. And then there will also be a switch. Um, probably, I'll probably do it somewhere over here by the light switch is where I'll put that in. And then um, just for reference, this hole right here is of course the ignition hole and the ignition um, module right now is still attached to the outboard motor in the shop because I'm still working on the outboard. So when the outboard is ready to be installed on the boat, the ignition module will, will also be reinstalled into the dash. So coming back to the wires for just a moment, one of the things I wanted to point out, any time that we are connecting something uh, that is a component level connection where we may end up needing to replace it in the future, we're using male and female spade connectors. These are just crimped onto your uh, stripped end of your wire. So you'll strip about a half an inch of wire off, off the end of your uh, conductor and crimp a male on one side and a female on the other side. Okay. And that just makes things very easy when you may have to disconnect something um, either for troubleshooting or replacement purposes. Now on our vintage light switch, Okay, and this is why I haven't tightened this up yet is because I'm still, I need to be able to twist it to work on it easier. But you'll notice that we're using ring connectors. If I can get that to focus, there we go. So ring connectors that are just crimped onto the, onto the conductor and then screwed with a screw into the blade of the switch itself. Here you can see the back side of this one. So it's just a screw that goes through the blade with a ring connector, okay? And then some heat shrink just to clean it up and make everything nice. I should have put some heat shrink on these as well. I didn't think about it until after I had already put them on. Um, I can still go back and do it though. That's not a that's not a big deal. And then on your junction block, same thing. So I just want to point out how easy these are to work with. So you just get yourself some ring connectors, strip off about three eighths to a half an inch of bare conductor on your wire, and you're just gonna crimp these on, okay? And then a little bit of heat shrink over them again, just to clean them up. Um, you can ignore the colors of my heat shrink. I ran out of red, so just make and do with what fit. It really doesn't matter to me to have correct colors when it comes to heat shrink. I know where the wires go. And then for your uh, conductor that goes from your battery to the junction block, these are larger terminal connectors, and you are going to need a larger crimping tool to properly crimp these. So I'm going to show you what I used, okay? These are, you can see the size of my finger. These are, these are fairly sizable eight gauge uh, terminal connectors. So to do all this work, uh, these are the main supplies and tools that I use. So in this kit, I have my ring connectors. Okay. And again, you just strip off about a half an inch, three eighths of an inch of bare conductor, put it through, and crimp it on. Easy peasy. These are your uh, different size blade connectors. So you, this particular set um, comes with three different size, three different wire gauge size connectors. And again, you have your females and your males so that they can pair up together. All your heat shrink, various different sizes. 
these are your uh, terminal connectors. And so for mine, for my junction block, I use the uh, eight, uh, AWG 8 gauge quarter inch hole. Okay, but these are all, I've got um, everything from 4 gauge, uh, 8 gauge, 10 gauge. There's a bunch of different sizes in there. Basic wire strippers, probably one of the most valuable tools to have in your kit because if you do enough wiring, you will use these for everything. These are your connector crimps. Also extremely, extremely valuable. Um, this makes doing proper crimps so much nicer. You get a, a broader uh, bite on the crimp and it just makes them so secure, so much more secure than the old fashioned uh, style that kind of look like these but are crimpers and they're very very thin like this these are just so much better now for the terminal connectors I didn't have a set of crimpers uh, large enough for 8 gauge wire so what I did is I do have a set of battery 12 volt battery terminal connector crimps and I was able to put the terminal connector right between this first set of jaws here and just gently squeeze it down till I had a really good crimp so kind of made do with those so, you know, screwdrivers, drill, um, flashlight, there's a lot of other stuff, of course, all your wiring. There's a lot of other stuff that you're going to need um, as well, meter. But the important thing is um, just making sure you have all the right tools. And, you know, if you, if you plan ahead for this stuff, then you don't have to be laying on your back under your dash, twisting wires and, and uh, using electrical tape on everything and just basically making a mess out of everything. You can, you can do it real nice. So I hope this helps.